Did you know that there's a country that has special forces to deal with pirates? Or where teenagers were once forced to remove landmines? This is the dark side of Denmark. Nowadays, Denmark is deemed as one of the best places to live, being the ninth freest economy in the world. It's also one of the richest countries with a GDP of 401.12 US dollars and a GDP per capita of $68,122 in 2022. Although its economy seems to have been repaired, the war still had an impact on the country. It seems that the country was not always as neutral as it claimed to be. One of them is the cruel use of prisoners of war to remove landmines. It's a rather odd fact because it's virtually unknown and not many know of the incident. After World War II, most captured Germans were prisoners of war in Denmark. Because Denmark is a short route to Berlin, the Axis powers prepared for invasion by planting around 1 to 2 million landmines along the shorelines. As it turns out, the area was not touched during the World War, but the landmines remained. The British forces in Denmark offered the German prisoners of war to clear the path to gain freedom, or rather, force them. Denmark officers then watched over the task. The prisoners crawled on their stomachs with a metal rod, prodding the sand with bare hands to unearth landmines. Nearly half of the men were killed or badly wounded. Another sad fact is that these prisoners were not hardened Nazis. They were mainly teenage boys and some elderly men who were part of the Volkstrom, a national militia conscripted in the last years of the war. Denmark might seem like a utopic Scandinavian country now, but did you know that these countries' first kings were pirates? It might not shock you as much when you realize that Vikings happened to rule the territory from around 793 BC. The foundation of the Danish royalty was built upon the raids done by the Vikings, who looted and pirated everything that came their way. What they used was aptly called the Viking Warfare. The Vikings used ships, strategic mobility, and a strong grasp of logistics to ensure they caused havoc to others. Vikings murdered slaves and prisoners, but historians believe that they were not that different from other tribes that existed then. You might ask, what happened to this brutal yet effective force? The Vikings did not vanish or become extinct. They simply assimilated to a different way of life. Descendants of the Vikings still live to this day and are part of the society. They changed their ways because European lands became stronger and moved inland, making it difficult for the Vikings to raid and escape from. They finally settled down in established territories such as Denmark, Norway, and Iceland. In a cruel twist of fate, the Danish now have one of the most efficient special forces that has a reputation for anti-piracy operations. These men are called the Danish Frogmen or the Froemen Skopskin. They are also known to have the scariest looking uniform, which is a combination of helmet and veil. The veil of nets is worn for camouflage, as it hides the face and breaks up the silhouette of the soldier. That way, the enemies won't be able to easily recognize them. It also hides their goggles from being seen. An example of their deadly effectiveness is when it took down Somali pirates in the Atlantic Ocean without Danish casualties. The pirates shadowed merchant vessels before Danish frogmen shot four pirates and wounded one. These men are so elite that they're virtually unknown compared to other special operation units, such as the SEAL Team. They were created in 1957, but their lineage can be traced to World War II. It was established by veterans who served in the special boat section that had destroyed more German and Italian aircraft on the ground than the Royal Air Force. The selection and training of the Frogmen Corps is one of the harshest in the world, and out of 500 applicants, only a handful will be picked and graduated. Another dark past that looms in Denmark is the forced sterilization, neglect, violence, confinement, and abuse of the disabled and Greenland Inuit. There were about 15,000 children and adults with disabilities who were sent to facilities between 1933 and 1980. According to Danish authorities, they were placed under special care to protect society. This is also connected to the theories of eugenics based on improving the genetic quality of the human population by exterminating the inferior ones. People with disabilities such as blindness, epilepsy, and physical or mental handicaps were committed to institution. They were subjected to forced sterilization so as not to reproduce and had to obtain special permission from the authorities if they wanted to marry. 
This was also done to thousands of young Greenland Inuit. Although the territory is no longer a colony of Denmark, it is still under Danish control. Around 4,500 women were subjected to forced contraception to limit birth control in the Arctic territory. Most of these young girls were sent to study in Denmark and got the procedure done to them in their boarding school. Their parents were never asked for consent and never informed of the decision. The Danish government has since apologized for both incidents, citing that what happened was far below what the government believed in now. If you're a fan of childhood tales, you might have heard about this celebrated Danish figure who's considered a national treasure, Hans Christian Andersen. He created some of the most legendary stories of our time, Little Mermaid, Ugly Ducklings, and The Little Match Girl. As legendary as they are, there's a certain sad undertone to these tales. That's because most of these stories are autobiographical and taken from his sad experiences earlier in his life. The Ugly Duckling was a reflection of his feelings of alienation as a boy who was teased for his appearance. Anderson often placed his characters in desperate and hopeless situations to mirror his traumas in life. He was raised in poverty, lost his father at an early age, and was forced to work in a factory at age 11 to support his mother. His original version of The Little Mermaid is darker and is very similar to his experience of being celibate for all his life. Unlike the Disney version that paints a happy ending, the prince chooses someone else in the end. The mermaid accepts her fate and throws herself in the sea, where she dissolves into sea foam. In real life, Hans Christian Andersen fell for many women and possibly a few men, but his feelings were unrequited each time. Denmark is considered to be one of the happiest countries in the world. It even has its Museum of Happiness in Copenhagen. So it's quite shocking to find out that the country is also deemed as one of the worst places for making friends, especially expats. A large number of expatriates or foreigners have found it hard to settle in the country, and the majority of them reported difficulty in making local friends. According to research, this is due to Denmark seeing itself more as an old-fashioned tribe rather than a melting pot. They value uniformity and cohesion which is why no one is accepted in Denmark unless they adapt to the culture and lifestyle. The pressure for uniformity is probably why depression is the country's most common illness, with about one in five people living in Denmark struggling with depression. Mental health is also one serious concern among Danish youths, with 15% being dissatisfied with their lives. The condition is worsened by its culture of drinking, as young Danes start drinking before the age of 15. Danes are the biggest drinkers in Scandinavia, and their adolescents also hold the European records for getting drunk. Alcohol abuse and alcohol-related diseases result in about 4,000 deaths per year in Denmark. Some have called for Parliament to raise the age limit because current rules allow people as young as 16 to buy alcoholic drinks. Denmark still has its share of dark side it needs to overcome. Let's hope this Scandinavian nation will rectify its faults and rise above its challenges.